God has given us all free will. At every moment we have a choice. Should I spend the evening receiving the knowledge of the Bhagavad Gita from Swamiji? Or should I be relaxing in the sofa of my drawing room watching television? Or should I be going for a game of golf with my friend? Or should I sit in the bar and drink alcohol? So every moment we have a choice. Some people say, why is this choice being given to us and then our children use it wrongly to indulge in drugs and smoking etc. Why this defect in God's world is designed? Bhagavad Gita Chapter 3 Karma Yoga Verse chanting is followed by translation and commentary by Swami Mukundananda. Matamidam nityam anutishthanti manavaha Radhavanto na suyantaha Muthyante tepi karma bhihi Those who abide by these teachings of mine with profound faith and free from envy are released from the bondage of karma. Now Sri Krishna says Arjun, Yeme Matam Idam Sarvam Those who accept my Mat What is Mat? Opinion. Sri Krishna is not saying principle. One is Siddhant. Siddhant is irrevocable principle. Nobody can cut it. It is the truth. Now God is giving this knowledge. But he is out of his humbleness saying, this is my opinion. Actually, Sri Krishna, he is also presenting an opinion. You see, when Sri Krishna says, by karma yoga you will attain God, that is the truth. By karma sannyas you will attain God, that is the truth, that is the siddhant. By surrendering your mind completely to Him, you will receive His grace, that is an eternal truth. But when He says, Arjun, between these two paths, I recommend this path, that is His opinion. It's not obligatory. There are people who choose the path of sannyas. Sri Krishna himself recommended, I was mentioning yesterday, to Uddhav. Uddhav, just renounce everything and perform your sadhana. That was for a different purpose. This is for a different purpose. The teachers preach according to time, place and circumstance. So Shri Krishna out of his humbleness and accuracy is saying, Arjun, when I am telling you that you be a karma yogi, that is my opinion. So Shri Krishna first gave that knowledge to Arjun. As I always say, that if you wish to do the practical, the theory must be clear. If in regard to the theory, there are all cobwebs in the mind, then in that confusion, you cannot do practical properly. So the first step is to get all the knowledge clear. What is this Atman? What is God? What is Maya? What is Karma? What is Gyan? What is Bhakti? Clarify the theory. And Sri Krishna has done that in great detail in this chapter. Explaining work, the science of work, karma yoga. And then, in the previous verse, was the call for action. Now, if you remain in knowledge, ultimately that doesn't amount to anything. Yatha kharash chandana bharavahi bharasya veta natu chandanasya. If you put on a donkey a load of chandan, sandalwood, the donkey only knows its weight. 
He doesn't realize it's carrying chandan. It may be carrying stones for all it knows. Similarly, we learn up all the scriptures. But we don't put them into action. The scriptures say then we are like that donkey carrying the chandan. We have no realization. So knowledge must be followed by action. And Sri Krishna gave the call for action. In the previous verse, he said, Arjun, now do this. And in this verse, he is now giving consequences. That if you follow this path, these are the virtues that you will get. But he is saying that in order to do that, you will need faith, you will need dedication. So, even the Lord gives us the knowledge but grants us the free will to choose what we like. He is not imposing it upon us. Arjun, I am God, you have to do this. No. God has given us all free will. At every moment we have a choice between us. We had the choice. Should I spend the evening receiving the knowledge of the Bhagavad Gita from Swamiji? Or should I be relaxing in the sofa of my drawing room watching television? Or should I be going for a game of golf with my friend? Or should I sit in the bar and drink alcohol? So many choices. Infinite choices at every moment. Even while sitting in the Bhagavad Gita class, you have the choice. Should I be trying to focus completely on what Swamiji is saying? Or should I let my mind loose and let it wander around a little bit? For some side enjoyment. So every moment we have a choice. Now some people say, why did God give us a choice? So if he had not given us a choice, we would do nothing wrong. We would have to do everything that he wanted us to do. Why is this choice being given to us and then our children use it wrongly to indulge in drugs and smoking etc. Why this defect in God's world, his design? The fact is that if we had a choice, we would do nothing wrong, but we would also do nothing right. Because to do something right, you need a choice. I mean, a machine is neither good nor bad. It's just doing what it's supposed to do. But then a machine doesn't have the ability to love. In order to love, you need the free will. Only somebody who has the free will can choose. All right, should I love God? No, I'll love him after retirement. <laughs> no, this life I've got a doubt whether there's God or not. Next life I'll see to it. So this free will gives us the option and it gives us the opportunity to love God. So he wants us to love him. And that is why he has given us a free will. Scientists who are analyzing this body and in their reductionist understanding assuming it to be a mere combination of atoms and molecules, let them explain what is this free will. If everything is a combination of atoms and molecules, there is no scope for free will. Then our actions are absolutely decided by the state of our atoms and molecules and the combination of them. Does science permit free will? And yet all scientists realize that they have a free will. There was once a scientist who used to keep a horseshoe in his house. So, 
somebody asked him that why do you keep a horseshoe this superstitious thing he said you know people have told me that a horseshoe is auspicious so i keep it that person said but scientists are not superstitious don't tell me you believe that a horseshoe will give you good luck no but this person told me that whether you believe or not believe the horseshoe will do its work that's why i'm keeping it there now each scientist is realizing that there is this thing called free will now how is this free will explained on the basis of science there is no explanation but it exists it has been given to us by god so that we can love him now we are misutilizing it and getting into trouble when god knows in his wonderful arrangement they will slowly learn if by misutilizing the free will we could be happy then we could get away from god permanently let's say forgetting god you know somebody says i don't choose god i choose maya and that person becomes happy then god would have something to worry about oh this child of mine has got permanently separated but god has created this maya in such a way that it keeps giving slaps you want to enjoy separate from god all right now your cholesterol is going up now what are you going to do now you've got a problem in the family now what now the business is on the decline now what so the material energy ensures the ramayan says himate anal prakat baru hoi vimukh ram sukh pavan koi tulsi das ji gives now not his opinion he gives the siddhant he says himate anal prakat baru hoi fire may be created from ice this impossible may become possible but vimukharam separated from god in our consciousness nobody can be happy so god has given us the free will he has given us the opportunity to make mistakes and he has created all these rectifiers in his material energy so that we slowly 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 keep learning growing maturing he knows one day we will reach that ultimate perfection and that is the goal of religion swami vivekanand said these prophets were not unique we say they were unique you know they were so pure i can never be like that so i have got all right to continue sinning no these prophets were not unique they were men as you and i and they had attained super consciousness and you and i can do the same the very fact that one man attained that state indicates that all men can do so and that ultimately is religion So what is religion? Religion. To re-link. We've broken the link with God. To re-link. That is religion. That is yoga. So yoga is not yoga. I mean there's a slight difference. You know yoga is very popular. Every 10th person in the western world nowadays is practicing yoga. and the latest fashion is to be a yoga teacher even dan brown and his angels and demons his heroine is a yoga teacher so the latest fashionable thing is to be a yoga teacher this yog yoga doesn't exist in sanskrit sanskrit has got yog and yog means union to unite 
so when the individual soul unites with the supreme soul that is yog that is religion that is the purpose of all spirituality jagat guru shri kripalu ji maharaj says hari ka vyogi jeev गोविंद राधे सांचो योग सोई जो हरी से मिला दे द सोल इज इन वियोग सेपरेटेड फ्रॉम गॉड ट्रू योग इज दैट विच यूनाइट्स द सोल विद गॉड Now, whether it's karm yog, yan yog, ashtang yog, whatever, if it is uniting the soul with God, it is true yog. And if it doesn't, then it is not yog; it is ku yog. So that is the purpose of all spirituality, and that is the purpose of our life to go back to our source. All religions are saying the same thing. The Quran Sharif ends here. Ma khalak talin samaj nilla le avadun ya ayyuhu allazin. A iman walo, Allah miya khuda vantala made you for this purpose. Ye people of faith, that you should do His ibadat, His mohabbat, and if you do it, you are insan. This word insan is coming from the Arabic Arabic's root uns. which means surrendered to god and one who doesn't do it is shaitan so all of them that is what the bible also said the first and foremost commandment is to love the lord thy god with all thy heart and all thy might and all thy soul so we human beings have been created we have come in this world so that we should learn to love him and perfect our lives but that love requires the free will if there is force there is no love you have experienced it with your own children once they are 15 force doesn't work it rebounds people come to me swami ji you know how can i make my child the spiritual i say how old is your child he is 17 now as it just stand back it's better you try and force him he's not going to listen let the world and you give him good opportunity for knowledge but at this stage you can't force him so this even god does not force he merely gives the knowledge lord ram gave one lecture shri krishna's lecture is the bhagavad gita Lord Ram gave one lecture in his eleven thousand years. Ek baar Raghunath bulaye, Guru Dwij Purvasi sab aaye. All the residents of Ayodhya came, even Guru Vashisht came. So Ram said, "Bade bhag manush tanu pawa sur dur labh sad granth ni gawa." Oh, you residents of Ayodhya. The human form you have received is very precious. It is desired even by the celestial gods, the devatas hanker. Make me a human. So utilize this form very carefully, very wisely. And he gave them a whole set of instructions which is there in the Uttar Kand then finally says, "Sunahu karahu jo tum hi suhai." Oh residents of Ayodhya I have given you the knowledge hear it think about it do what you like that is how shri krishna concludes the gita as well in the 18th chapter towards the end he says itite gyana makhyatam guhiyad guhyataram maya Vimrishyai tad sheshen yathechasi tatha kuru Arjun I have given you the whole knowledge of the Gita now it is up to you do what you wish so to love god means to exercise our free will in his direction 
not in the past you know i surrendered to him 5 years ago so now there's nothing to do at every moment because at every moment he is giving you a choice so at every moment to choose god that is the manifestation of our love so shri krishna has given arjun the call for action now he is giving him the choice and inducing him by telling him that arjun if with faith dedication and devotion you follow this instruction of mine then you will find yourself reaching the ultimate goal